All right, smiles, everyone. Our quest to reunite information society continues in the hills outside the city of Angels. We're in the parking lot of a venue called the Canyon Club in Agora Hills. Inside, Amanda Kramer is rehearsing for a gig tonight. Amanda's performing with the Psychedelic Furs tonight. They have a sound check this afternoon. We're going to ambush her right after sound check. And we're not leaving until we get her. We've just spotted Amanda Kramer. She's gone into this coffee shop. Chuck, okay, great, thank you. Let me go. No, it, go she, what, when she's inside? Going now. She's inside. Amanda Kramer? Yeah. Hi. My name's Amir, and I'm from a, a show called Bands Reunited yeah. on VH1. And uh, we're here on a very special mission, actually. Oh, dear. Yes. We're, we're traveling far and wide to gather the members of this band. Oh, my God. Indeed. And uh, what we're doing is uh, we're oh, dear. going up to them one at a time and inviting to a special one-night-only reunion and performance. So I'm here to ask you in person oh, if you'd like to participate in this reunion. Oh, my. Well, I mean... I would. I'm just kind of busy at the moment. Oh, well, I mean, we'll, we'll work around your schedule. Yeah, yeah. We, if we can... Yeah, yeah. If you're in? I'd, I'd be interested. She's in. interested! That's excellent. Now, what, what, we, uh, what we ask all the, uh, the people to do who've signed on board yes. is to literally sign on board. Ladies and gentlemen, oh Amanda Kramer's on board. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Amanda's role in the band was like a den mother, even uh, outside the band. Sort of the dysfunctional New York uh, bitter den mother. Now, before we talk about uh, your days with Info Society, let's talk a little bit about what you're doing today. You're about to s celebrate an anniversary. Well, the two years with the Furs. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, it's great, actually, because they were one of my favorite bands when I was, you know, my early 20s. Uh, it was, it was quite a thrill to get the call. In your time with, with Information Society, I, I find it a, a very interesting story about this band because mm. it has so many chapters. Tell me about that uh, meeting with Jim Cassidy in Boston. Yes, well, Jim and I were um, attending the same art school, the Museum School for Fine Arts, and uh, we just became, you know, friends, and we were working on, like, video projects together or something, and then um, just asked me if I wanted to do a, a two-month summer tour because they had had this song called Running that um, was on Tommy Boy, then picked up by Tommy Boy Records, and got to number 10 on the dance charts that year. So we thought it was really cool that we had this group that was melding the hip-hop sensibility with great pop melodies. I mean, it was a real sociological experience because it was, um, you know, for four geeky white kids to be allowed in, in these places. We were literally the only you know, white people within miles. They were really probably the best audiences I've ever played to. There must have been something to it, that your particular sound in that band. Well, that was Paul. I really do think that's all Paul Robb's, you know, that his, his, his uh, forte, his genius, so to speak. It was, you know, the rhythm, the rhythm section, the drum and bass. And for some reason, he had tapped into this you know, wave that was just actually kind of up and coming. In high school, I was what is affectionately known as a band nerd uh, because I was in band. I, and I was in jazz band and stage band and all that kind of stuff. And that was the most important thing to me in high school. He was a pretty good band leader. You know, he had a lot of vision. It really was his kind of, his baby. Jim was Paul's uh, right-hand man, really. You know, I didn't think that Paul could have done it kind of without Jim, in a way. Yeah, they weren't that keen on hang out with Kurt sometimes. Why is that? Oh, well, Kurt, he was, a, he, he was kind of eccentric on the road. He wore a doctor's coat for about a couple of years. I remember there was like a few years he wouldn't get off roller skates. Did that create friction between the two of them? I think so, yeah, probably. The roller skates were a bone of contention. And of course, the more we hated it, the more he loved it. Now, were you and Kurt together for a while as well? Yes, we were. How did that work in the band dynamic? Uh, not fantastically. You know, I kind of learned my lesson. But we were spending so much time together. Kind of like a cute young couple for a little while. Right. So I guess you would hear his side of the, the Kurt. It's so and... embarrassing. Oh, no, come on now. <laughs> 
It's all for the greater good, and that is setting the record straight. Oh, <laughs> the reason I ask is I, I'm sure you, you heard a lot of uh, Kurt's take on whatever friction or, or opposition that he and Paul would experience, you know. Yes, but you know, it, I kind of just tried to stay out of it, really, because it's like they had known each other so long already. What started to get you thinking of other projects of moving on? Why did you decide to eventually leave? Well, you could hear a lot of uh, four different versions of this, I'm sure. I don't want to explain it in a way that would make her mad. If anyone's going to say anything, it's up to Amanda to, to talk about it or no one. Uh, complicated, very complicated and uh, hurtful. Yeah, I was a very... Uh, yeah, naughty uh, girl when I was younger, and basically they, they decided to kick me out because I was a heroin addict. So um, at the very end, uh, it, they were all very upset about it, something I kind of kept secret for them for a long time. Was this addiction something that uh, came about when you joined the band, or? No, no, no. It was well before Oh, that. yeah, yeah, no, it had been going on for three years. It, it did start to interfere with the band towards the end. How so? Well, I mean, well, just, you know, just ridiculous um, junky things like, you know, I'd have bundles sent to the hotels every day or carrying syringes through metal detectors at airports, you know, because I was strung out and I had to have it just to, you know, maintain. And I would go through phases where I'd run out on the road as well and be going through withdrawal and that sort of thing, which it's not pleasant for anyone. I just went in, into treatment and they voted me out of the band, basically. At the time, of course, I was very angry about it, and um, you know, I thought it, <clears throat> it was terribly unfair, and uh, you know, they should all have their heads examined. But in a way, I'm very grateful. It was, you know, it saved my life, and you know, I, that was a, kind of the end of that sort of phase of, of, you know, my childhood. When did you next make contact with the individual members after you emerged from re rehabilitation? Well, Kurt and I stayed in touch for a while, and um, to be honest with you, I haven't talked to Paul or Jim since then. Oh, okay. So it's been 16 years. Wow. This will be an extra special reunion then. <laughs> but perhaps a, a closing of a circle. The mystery of Amanda Kramer's departure is solved. Her heroin addiction forced her out of the group. Now, after 16 years, she's finally ready to face her bandmates and reunite. Days later, Amanda took time out from her London tour with the Psychedelic Furs and flew back to Los Angeles to reunite with Information Society. Feeling a bit apprehensive, but it's been such a long time. Hey, man. Jim Cassidy, how are you, sir? Here. It's good to see you nice again. Nice to see you again. How have you been? Calm. As a cucumber. You go through that door, and okay. we'll see you shortly. See ya. The reason I participate in the show, because I love this. I mean, I live for it. I love the stage, and I miss all that, and I love the energy of performing, and I always have. Just very curious to see who's actually going to show up for this thing. I'm worried about this. <sighs> Hello, darling. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you it's doing? It's so good to see you. Let's do the Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you did fly in a long way, did you not? I did. Where were you last? I was in London yesterday. I will leave you with your thoughts as you go inside. I'm feeling pretty excited at this point to see my other bandmates. Um, very apprehensive, very curious. <laughs> Very odd. Mr. Cassidy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> You're all grown up. <laughs> the Prado, Minnesota. Uh, <laughs> Paul Rob. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Keep him back. How are you? Good, man? good to see you. Really good, good to see you. you. You look great. Thank you. Yeah, nice suit, my friend. The last time I saw Jim Cassidy, he gave me such a raft of crap yeah. for my attire, I thought I'd. Impress him. Oh, I think you will. Yeah. Okay. You go inside and I'll see you soon. All right. Thanks, Paul. I feel great about it. I can't wait to see them. I think it's going to be a great time. It'll be very interesting. I can't tell you how we're going to be. We were always very odd to begin with. It was a very odd combination. So I'm assuming we'll be just as dysfunctional as we ever were. Really right? Oh, my friends. <laughs> I want to buy you a drink. <laughs> oh, very nice. 
And now what? Three members of Information Society are here, but the eccentric Kurt Harland seems to be running late. When Bands Reunited returns, lead singer Kurt Harland still hasn't arrived. Is our concert in jeopardy? I still think it's 50-50.